2022. Has everyone had a chance to look over the meeting minutes? both ways and different things that we have so Sarah with an H yes, good please thank you <laughs> thanks for telling me and I'll just go ahead and add it right now anything else do, do we have a motion to accept the meeting minutes from November motion to set second meeting. all in favor aye aye, aye. okay the financial statement, Haley? Yes, let me let's take a look at it. I'm going to bring it up on the screen and um, Okay, so I was able to report the good news last month that the EOEA had given us more money, so the Executive Office of Elder Affairs gave us a larger grant um, for FY23 than we had anticipated. Um, so that's not news, but that is reflected that the date of that dispersal is reflected in this report. And so we still are looking at, you know, a, a, a bit of a surplus, um, and I'm thinking about how and it's nice to know that we have that cushion because we're writing our draft, our draft budgets. All department heads are creating budgets for um, for next year for FY24. So it's good to know that you know can we you, have. Can you move down to that? Uh, yeah. Well, to this that is the um, state formula grant. Yeah. It's that. So that's what came in. Um, and oh, it looks like the start balance. Um, so it looks like so we have. Um, you know, we have, you know, significantly about nine thousand, a little over nine thousand dollars more than I expected to have, um, and we are also. I was also informed that we will not, in the future, need to um, return unspent balances to the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. So that's good news. Um, but we should, I should be, nonetheless. I think it's it's good practice to plan to spend it all, mm -hmm. and um, I'll mention that something that. I am interested in utilizing that little bit of extra money for would be to give our administrative assistant Catherine Abe um, some additional hours next year. I'd like next fiscal year I'd, instead of 19, which keeps her unbenefited and not getting sick days, and you know at a disadvantage as an employee. I'd like her to be moved over. I still don't think it is necessary that the job become full time, but I would like her to move into the category of being a benefit, of getting some benefits, of getting some paid holidays, um, prorated for the number of hours a week she works, and being able to get sick days, and being able to accrue some vacation. Um, I, you know, she deserves that. Um, so that's my thinking right now on having a little bit of that extra money. Um, I want to also report that I haven't, we, our van fares come in dollars, so it, I, they, they get, deposited very rarely, maybe once or twice a year, and I have a little over $400 to submit to the van account in cash that um, uh, I just I just had it um, transferred from $1 bills to bigger bills so that I don't, so that the person in the treasurer's office doesn't have to count, you know, $300 bills. <laughs> um, so that, that will be a change that you'll see in the next report, but that um, I have some van money that it's time to deposit. Um, other than that, there's really, um, I'm, I'm, I just want you to know that I'm involved in writing our, our draft for next year's budget and submitting it. It's due this week. Um, it's earlier than in the past because the fi financial team in, in Town Hall would, is wanting to have additional lead time to work on the budget. It's the most important document they create in the year, and it takes a lot of thought and meetings and data and so they like they've requested that information early this year and I um, I'm going to be requesting some more in recreational services because already it's you know it's December and we're down to seventy six dollars in that account 
I make things work because we still have money in gifts and donations, which I am able to use. Um, that's where money for the programs goes, and then it's where money for the program, and then I can spend money from that account um, to pay for teachers and um, special things. Doesn't it say that the balance is? Oh yeah, seventy-six. Okay, yep. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask for a little more in the program line because I think that that is reasonable given that we spend it well before the end of the fiscal year, which indicates to me that that's too small a number. Um, everything else seems to be pretty much on target with what you'd expect the spent spending um, to be at this time of year, and I feel like what I projected was pretty reasonable. Um, I'm probably going to spend down the postage line by putting money in our postage account. So you pre-spend, you, you submit, you deposit money um, in a postage account. We have a non-profit postage rate, which keeps our postage costs really reasonable. It's overseen by the friends of the Hadley Council on Aging, but the money is coming from our budget. Um, so that's, as of yet, that money is unspent, but my plan is to... Um, Submit, get that money, um, transfer that money to that postal account soon. Um, I learned from Violet that our fitness equipment was under is under a three-year maintenance warranty, and it hasn't need, needed to have anything fixed. So, although I budgeted eight hundred dollars for it, I think that money is not going to be spent. So, I'm trying to estimate what would make sense next year, just in case something does fail, because machines do fail, unfortunately, even when they are lightly used. Um, so these are all the things I'm thinking about. But as usual, the main expenditures are in the category of salaries. And um, everything else is kind of a pittance, small amounts. You know, we, we spend very little on office supplies because the main supply that we buy is paper. And, um, you know, we spend a fair amount on gasoline, but, you know, not a crazy amount because our system is modest. Um, this year we've spent more, you know, thinking in terms of projecting spending for next year and spending needs. This year, unlike previous years that I've been here, um, Violet and Lauren and I all attended the MCOA conference and that costs a good bit of money. Um, so that was, let's see, under tuition and meetings. So that cost you know, just for us to attend that meeting, and that's not reimbursement for mileage or lodging or food. That was $750 for three of us to attend that, and neither of us attended the entire thing. But it's incredibly worthwhile. So that's the kind of thing that I'm going to want to boost a little bit next year to keep that opportunity, you know, available. And to now, um, I, I wasn't quite sure what that would cost us when we finally <coughs> go back into attending it, and I see that it's a lot. So. I'll, um, I'll probably request additional funding in that category for next year. Um, but I don't think that there's anything else very noteworthy to point out here. Um, but happy to take any questions you might have. Any questions? Do we have a motion to accept the financial statement for November 2022? Oh. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Should we do the building update or should we wait for um, Well, I can give you, or we can we? always circle back when Jane comes back and, and she can offer additional detail or take some questions, but I will, I need to tell you, unfortunately, that this RFP for our solar array was withdrawn. Um, and the reason for that was that there was an error in the the RFP document that was too significant to overlook and so it needs to be withdrawn and corrected and then posted again so that there's a delay with that that's a little frustrating but what can you do mistakes get made and it happened and it just needed to be corrected so um, in fact we were supposed to have a walkthrough with an interested vendor last Friday that was canceled due to this problem um, so that's a little bit of a bummer of news, but it, it's still going forward. It's just yet another delay on that. How quickly do you expect to move, it to move forward? <laughs> well, I think it's just a matter of, I know the error was that the wrong roof specs were put in, were, you know, embedded in the RFP. 
so the right, the corrected roof specs need to be um, incorporated. I, I'm not the one, so that will be done um, probably by Jennifer James, who's our procurement officer, and um, with in tandem with some help from Gary Berg, who is on our building committee and is our you know the the building's maintenance supervisor. So I I can't predict exactly when they'll um, be able to do it, but I think it do will be soon. Do you recall how much, uh, what the, when the RFP goes out, uh, how much time people have to, to... I don't know because this was just up before it got snagged, before, you know, before it was withdrawn. So I don't, but there, I do know that in very little time there was already an interested party. So I think it depends on how many responses they get and how robust and how competitive those bids are. So, but I don't know. I've not managed a process. I, I don't have good experience to go on, so I can't say. Okay. Oh, I think I want. So I wanted to mention some highlights from 2022 um, because I was just writing. I was just writing the the board. In my letter to from the director, which is in the the newsletter that comes out every other month, and I was just really thinking about, you know, how how this place had operated and grown in that calendar year, and some, you know, notable accomplishments. So, I'm, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna um, get to that document and just share some highlights and and just ask you to give it a read when you get your newsletter because I think we have a lot to feel proud about and I feel like this year we really were able to grow into being in this space and you know in, enjoy it and, and then enjoy some eased up restrictions in regards to COVID so that it didn't feel as dangerous to be gathering. Uh, let's see. So in this document, I'm, I'm providing some a little bit of you know yearly statistics on the numbers of rides that we've given. We you know our our ability to do um, medical volunteer medical rides has really grown. We've um, we've been able to recruit several new volunteers, seven in the year, um, all of them who um, do provide the service, so it's really, really helped and enhanced our ability to provide rides for people. Because as you know, our van is on a repeating loop that just sort of goes up and down Route 9, hitting the various shopping plazas and apartment complexes. So although it's useful, it's a little underutilized, and it's also limited, and the real needs that people have, especially people without, and people without cars have, is getting to an appointment that's out of town and not on our bus route. So I feel good about the way our volunteer program has grown um, and it was you know and by the end of 2022 it will be well over 150 rides that were provided um, and we hired Catherine Abe this past year which has been um, which has been a really nice development and she continues to kind of grow with the job and learn the ins and outs of how things happen here, you know, from programming to what happens at the reception desk to even some outreach stuff. I mean, she the job is challenging in that it touches everything, and you need to have some sort of generalist knowledge about everything that goes on here, even if you aren't the key responsible person for these categories of work that go on here. Um, and I think Catherine's really adapted well, and um, as I said, I'll be glad to recommend that she receive some additional hours in the next fiscal year. But I feel like that was a big accomplishment, and it was a lot of work to hire someone, and there were some bumps along the way, as you all know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's it's. Um, I I learned something as a as a supervisor <coughs> and as um, a hiring person that you know the the different kinds of challenges, the unforeseen challenges that can come up with creating a position and hiring. It's, it's interesting. Um, so, you know, over 500 individual people participated in our programs this past year. Um, I think that's, you know, that's not really close to the number of seniors in Hadley, but it's still a strong number and it felt commensurate with being open in a safe way um, and our offerings. 
there are times when I feel like, you know, there are times when it feels really busy, and then there are times when you, I, I could wish for it to be a little more busy. And so we'll still work on that balance, and I feel like it will be achieved. Did, did you make any kind of judgment about uh, the volume of activity during this current year compared to pre-new building years? You know what? I haven't done that, Dave. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. just yeah. curious. Right. We assumed that it would go way up, but of mm -hmm. course COVID. Yeah, I don't know the answer ever. to that, but I think that that's a really interesting. I feel like you mentioned it last meeting and I didn't follow up, but I, I like the idea of comparing it to pre-COVID yeah. programming yeah. density, so to speak. Could, we, could you mention uh, about being open on Tuesday and Thursday evenings well, in this? Or yeah, no? um, I don't know if I did or not, but that is a notable change for the better, I feel. Mm -hmm. um, and at a glance, I don't really remember if I wrote that down, but I think that's a really good point. Um, something I want to mention is that and so the, our age and dementia friendly community assessment and action plan is now completed. I, will, um, I won't wait for the next board meeting. I'm going to send you um, those documents. And those, were, those represent a year or m really more than a year of, of work. But, and even more than a year with our um, senior planner, Becky Bash, who led our process. Um, so that, that was a big, um, that, was a, that was a lot to do, and I feel like our working, our working group did a really nice job um, providing some editorial feedback. Becky and her interns did a good job with pulling data from our, the survey that was conducted here, as well as other kinds of documents like the, mass, the Hadley's most, most recent master plan, and other you know, um, census data to come up with a really comprehensive look at um, at what it's like to what are the challenges and the um, advantages to aging in place in Hadley um, and we will be moving forward with that and I'll just mention that some priorities that have really risen to the top in my mind are um, finding a way to offer some level of care caregiver respite um, we're going to be able to offer a caregiver support group um, that's going to be led by um, I think a graduate student in the School of Nursing at UMass who's been in touch with me and who was recommended by Sheila Pinnell who is a professor of nursing at UMass who's been um, she's on our age and friendly age and dementia friendly Hadley working committee and she's also um, I, we helped we took on some of her students as interns last year um, who did a lot of really important work for us um, so I'm really happy to move ahead with that relationship and then create another relationship with it with a new student. Um, uh, Linda and I have had the idea of approaching businesses, of creating a de dementia friendly certification for businesses in Hadley. This is something that other communities do. Boston has um, a really good model and this was the crux of one of our conversations during our sort of business community focus group that we had as part of this process. So that um, and the Amherst Chamber of Commerce is, um, in theory, uh, amenable to this idea and willing to work with us. So now we need to kind of move ahead with that. Um, I'm interested in thinking about housing solutions, um, like the potential of matching older adults who live in homes that are large and difficult for them to handle alone, um, taking in roommates and that are perhaps matched through a professional service that can assess um, the appropriateness of the housing situation and the person who needs the housing and the potential for the tenant to do some services for, you know, complete services, help, um, take out the trash, shovel snow, um, clean, do things for the, the older homeowner. So this is a model, again, that does exist in other communities, even in Massachusetts. And if there's a, um, the, the, the company that does the sort of online matchmaking is called Nesterly. And so that's something that I feel that Age and Dementia Friendly Hadley could move ahead with recommending um, to, the, um, to different um, people in the town to, to try to get it moving. Um, I'm also, I, it's become really clear to me 
um, that the neighbors groups, the Amherst neighbors, East Hampton neighbors, Northampton neighbors, so these these the village model of a sort of paying membership of people who feel that they may need service and then sets of volunteers in those communities and the work it takes to connect those people, those programs are, are really doing well and really meeting needs. Um, Hadley doesn't have one. What it needs is a go-getter founder who, is, who is, has the time, energy, and passion to basically found a nonprofit organization. Um, so it can't, that effort really can't come from a staff member at, at the senior center. However, I want to still bring this model to the foreground so that people in Hadley have increased awareness of the successful model that exists around them. We don't have access to Amherst neighbors or Northampton neighbors. They, well, to be honest, Amherst Neighbors does serve people who live on in the Green Leaves complexes because it's, it literally straddles the town line, so they made the generous decision to include people whose actual address is in Hadley but who are within that complex. So Amherst Neighbors can serve them, but they won't serve others in, in, North, in Hadley. Um, so I want to continue to amplify the message that this is a model that is really beneficial. Something that's not in my little roundup of achievements of 2022 is that we have also been um, lucky enough to, to have a handyman come forward to be a volunteer in our town. His name is Arlen Henderson. This information will be in our next newsletter. It's on our bulletin board and we just have begun, um, somebody called and I don't think she knew that, the, that, he, that we had someone in the role, but he just performed his first handyman <coughs> task last week and it went really well. And um, we had someone in this role who unfortunately passed away about a year ago named Bill Orr. And we haven't, and I've uh, tried to publicize the need in various ways. And finally, Arlen Henderson, who plays cards here, talked to me about different volunteer opportunities and he offered this and I was really thrilled. So I just want you to know, and you can feel free to let others know that we have a, a, a you know an older adult handyman in Hadley, who will assess different jobs on a case-by-case -case basis, but we have kind of a basic template of the things that he can and you know will and won't do, and um, and it, and so this could be really valuable for people. It's another thing that helps people age in place. If you have someone who for free can help you do things that you can't call a handyman and have him or her call you back about things that are small and minor, so it's really nice to have someone who will offer this service at no cost through us, um, who's been vetted by us, and he will be, and he um, even, he was very conscientious and he wanted a lanyard with a picture, photo ID, so that he, you know, was legit, and um, so we provided that, but that's, oh, I feel like that's a huge age-friendly boon um, that we've experienced. Um, another accomplish, I mean, you, I think all of you know that I've been really, in, I've been advocating for increased um, behavioral health services to be available to older adults in Hadley. Um, I kind of, I really directly asked a lot of agencies to consider taking on the um, MHOT model, that stands for Elder Mental Health Outreach Team, um, because it's an existing model that other, that different agencies in Massachusetts all over the state have adopted, and it's a team approach to providing home visit to su support to older adults who are struggling and within that struggle it's likely that there's a behavioral health issue. It could be substance misuse, it could be a hoarding disorder, it could be anxiety or depression or some of the, uh, the, the behavioral health issues that um, are often associated with um, aging. And um, anyway, so the um, Western Mass Elder Care, um, which is an ASAP, an Aging Services Access Point in Holyoke, um, at the urging of the new director of the Massachusetts Councils on Aging, Betsy Connell, they um, very kindly decided to um, include Hadley in their service area, and they have just instituted one of these teams. And they are still, I don't think they're completely operational because they need to hire a part-time licensed um, independent social worker. 
which won't be easy because those people are really in demand. Um, but once that supervisory role is in place, we should be free to make referrals. Hello. So Jane has just entered. And Jane, I'll just tell you, I'm kind of going over some highlights of the year, to, of, okay. our, of our year. And I was just describing the fact that Western Mass Elder Care has um, begun an elder mental health outreach team and are they are including Hadley in their service area. And um, related to this, we had a really successful behavioral health and anti-stigma um, forum just in, in November <laughs> with um, a series of, with, that featured several speakers who are, um, who work at a, in agencies um, in our county um, who I've kind of developed relationships with over the year of doing this advocacy work who, and including Carmen Lee, who is a, um, a resident of Hadley. Um, she lives with depression. She is a very strong and effective spokesperson on um, fighting stigma. And having this forum was her idea. Um, and she spoke very eloquently and shared some of her writing, including a poem. And she's, um, she's a wonderful writer. And she's a really strong um, speaker on behalf of people who are living with depression and at risk for and suicide. Um, so that that was it was, and that has been and that um, forum was filmed by Alex and it's available on the Hadley Media YouTube page. So I'll send around um, links to that as and a, as well a link to a wonderful film that Alex put together of our Walk to End Alzheimer's, which happened in September, and that was another notable thing that we did. We met our fundraising goal. We participated in the walk. Alex created a wonderful little film about it. And I feel like it's the we'll do it again because it was it wasn't a lot a great deal of effort. It was fun to walk. It was a good site. It was well organized, and it took very little to raise a thousand dollars. So lots of other things have happened, of course, but those are some of the things that I pulled out to just kind of celebrate a year of feeling solid, of having increased participation here, and an increased ability to serve people. I mean, as you know. It's not just um, it's not just enrichment activities that we offer. We offer social services. We are able to help people enroll in public benefits. Um, Lauren Hannigan does a great job with that. At only 25 hours a week, I might add, as well as um, coordinating the transportation system. Um, so I feel that we are you know running on all cylinders, and it feels really good. And thank you for all of your efforts to you know keep things going and you know offer some you know guidance and make sure that our governance is um, robust uh, let's see okay so Sarah Chadwick here is ha, is a nominee to be on our board and she is interested in doing that so Sarah I'm gonna ask you to just um, temporarily leave so that we can oh, um, certainly have that vote <laughs> You can hide in my office if you want. Uh, so, <coughs> right, and we're not assigning any officer responsibility at this time. That could come later, but I would like this to just be a basic um, board membership without additional responsibilities for starters. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so usually we uh, we honor the new member with a responsibility. <laughs> I well, given what Most happened with the last member, <laughs> I, I thought I thought starting slow might be the the better strategy. <laughs> that in the meantime you're serving as secretary. Well, I am writing minutes, yes, but you know I'll be honest, it's not it doesn't take that much time. Okay. As long as I'm jotting down the right notes, I'm, yeah. I'm And good. now you have Alex for backup. Yeah, <laughs> I know, maybe this negates the necessity of writing minutes, but I think the, I personally think that the written minutes are a good document that I don't want to discontinue, but yeah. Um, so, so, all in favor? So, Sarah Chadwick has been nominated at four, to be a new board member. Um, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Well, Sarah's a new member Yay! of our board. Thank you. I'll invite her back. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh. You're now a member of the board, Sarah. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
I'm really grateful for your interest and really happy to welcome you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I did a lot with age. I just said quite a lot about age and dementia friendly Hadley. Um, and I really kind of already gave the update, which was folded into my 2022 highlights, being that the, and Jane, I'll just review for you, the, um, the assessment and action plan is done. So I'm going to send that, that document to all of you. Um, I'm probably, I, I will have some printed up and available for the public and there will be an executive summary that will be submitted to the select board um, and it would be good for it to be on agenda to be approved. How soon would you like that on the agenda? Uh, well, so when are you next meeting? It could be pr pr pretty much as soon as, I think it's ready to go. Okay, I think our next agenda is pretty full, but January okay. 4th. January 4th, let's, let's go for it. Um, or, and it could be after that. It's not incredibly pressing, but I do want to keep moving ahead and bring this accomplishment to the attention of the select board and ask them to start thinking through the lens of age-friendly and the experience of aging. Um, Linda, do you want to, do you have any, any new updates on your role with the Highland Valley Elder Services Board? We had, well, first of all, since the last meeting, I don't know, don't know if I reported this, but I did get a tour. Oh, you did? I, I don't think we heard about it. It was not a physical tour. Okay. Uh, I sat down with a director and um, he went over every aspect of Highland Valley, what they do, what they provide, how they provide it. And um, it was very interesting, and it was very thorough. Mm -hmm. the, um, the program that I was interested in and did volunteer for, every board member has to take on a role. And I voted, volunteered for the Nutrition Council. And I'm interested in that because it was, if it's possible to improve our meals that are delivered here by Highland Valley, I'd like to see that. Um, particularly, my focus was on reducing the sodium mm -hmm. in the meals. But they are working on it. I was um, pleased to see that they are taking, um, paying more attention to diabetic needs and to the needs of people who have high blood pressure and so on. It's hard for them to work it in, but they are starting to uh, focus on that. And uh, we had a very brief board meeting. Um, I volunteered that Hadley's Age Friendly group had was very close at that time to completing the report, and that was pretty much it. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. And it's monthly, am I right? These meetings? It is now. It's it's monthly. Yes. Is it Zoom or in person? It's Zoom. Okay. It's still Zoom, and I think they're going to probably continue Zoom for a while because everyone on the board is so far flung. It's really helpful to the members yeah. to have it that way. Yeah. yeah, one of the benefits of Zoom. Some people would have to travel quite a way to the meetings. Right. So, How many people are on the board? Oh, God, how many showed up at the last meeting? Um, I want to say 15 or so. Okay, so not huge. Yeah, not, I mean, I don't, they're, not everyone shows up all at once, so. Um, all right, so we are, Violet, is, uh, to be more accurate, is working on the next newsletter, which as you know will include programs from January and February, so I asked her to print up a draft of the, of the, of the calendar of events happening, and I thought I might um, highlight some, some things that are going to be happening. Um, let's see, we are going to be in honor of Martin Luther King Day, we're going to be um, screening a really wonderful documentary that I saw recently called Soul. Um, and that's going to be Friday, the 13th of January. And I think there will be a, com like a, a facilitated conversation that I hope the department's the, um, um, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee for the town um, that we've been collaborating um, occasionally to to, to do some to screen movies here and to have programming here and um, the um, Pat Rismeyer liked the idea of of that um, being a featured documentary and it's um, really it's amazing it's about a wonderful series of, of concerts that happened in a in a massive park in Harlem in 1969 the same summer 
as Woodstock, but it's very, um, I think many people, many white people never knew this happened. But, you know, 50,000 people were there. There was no violence. There were no negative incidents. And it was an incredible all-star lineup of people who are, you know, performers who are very well known, loved, and respected today. Like, a, a young Stevie Wonder who, as a teenager, you know, he opened. Um, and it's just incredible. So it's moving. It's surprisingly moving. I was, like, crying through the whole thing for some reason. And um, just so wonderful to see this great music and to see this huge aspect of African-American culture that was um, really invisible in the white community in that year. Um, that, so that's coming up on Friday the 13th. Um, so Violet has been organizing some f some fun kind of show and tell experiences and sharing baby pictures for an after two tea will be on the 17th. That will be a nice opportunity. I hope some of you might um, do the holiday tradition sharing that's coming right up I think this week. Um, I forget what what day. Yeah, it's today. Okay, um, so that's that's coming up. Um, let's see. We have oh, and um, I'll mention too that on Mon the 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 Friends will be hosting our legislators, Senator Joe Comerford and Representative Dan Carey, on Monday, January thirtieth at one o'clock, and um, it's always really good and I think important to find some time to connect with them, bring some questions. We do have, there are community members who, who show up and who have done a little homework and who understand about pending legislation and ask questions like that, but they, they're very knowledgeable in a general way as well and always just glad to visit and, um, but take questions and offer information and usually they begin with summarizing some of their initiatives over the last quarter, let's say. So that'll be happening, and I hope you'll come because it feels good when um, their visit is validated with good attendance. <laughs> if you get my meaning. Um, so those are some, I mean, you know, so in our usual things, and we have other special things, I'm not gonna just read every single thing that's happening, but those are some notable events in January. Um, And let's see, just looking in February and seeing anything that might be unusual, any cool art classes. Hmm, we're having a chocolate tasting on Monday, the, uh, February 13th at 2. That sounds exciting. Um, there, um, the DA's office will be presenting a presentation on romance scams on the 15th at 1 o'clock. Again, this is February. Wow. And one of the art classes there, oh, there's going to be a four-part art class starting, um, that'll, that'll be Thursdays at 1 in February, Surrealism in Still Life. And I think it's featuring a teacher who is kind of new to us. She did, she taught something last month, and I'm not remembering her name, but um, she was well-liked and effective. And so she's doing this interesting four-part um, art class series. Art with Kit will be happening on Monday the 27th. And, oh, and the Birthday Ice Cream Social in February is going to feature the Fiddle Orchestra of Western Mass. They're going to perform. And they've been practicing here on Thursday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 um, in the exercise room. And it's been fun. I'm here when they're here. And it's been fun hearing them, and I'm really happy that um, they can offer, um, they can sweeten the deal of, you know, our permitting them to use that room and, and being here uh, on the 24th. And I need to, so there's a correction in the movie that I just mentioned. It's called, it's called Summer of Souls and it's happening Friday, February 10th. Um, and it's for Black History Month, but the movie, there, there's a movie called The Soul, that's how I got confused, <laughs> in January on the 13th. And I don't know what that movie is, but the, the, one, the one I was describing in detail is happening in, in fact uh, in February. Um, Friday the 10th at 1230. We're now scheduling those matinees to coincide with lunch. Um, so, you know, always, just as a reminder, when you get your newsletter, please take some time to look at the things we're doing and circle <coughs> things on the calendar that interest you, and don't hesitate to register, please. And um, I'll remind you, too, that we are changing the policy for out-of-town participants, and we'll be asking for a small surcharge um, on classes that have a fee 
and we're also doing away with a waiting list so that people from, say Amherst, that's the town, that's the town that most people who aren't from Hadley who come here are from. Um, and we, we will be, you'll get on the registration list when you present the fee. When, you know, so it's first come, first serve based on, yes, here's my $5 to be in this class, or here's my $7 to be in this class because I'm from out of town. Um, so this is a measure that in part is meant to simplify the work of the um, reception volunteers who prior to this change have been needing to maintain a waiting list of out-of-town people, call people when there's, a, when there's an opening, and you know just do some follow-up that's hard to remember to do. So I don't feel like it's been working all that well, and I think it's a little burdensome on um, our volunteers. So this is meant to simplify, but it's also meant to capture a little extra money from the people who aren't paying taxes in this town. They're paying taxes in their own town, though, and you also have the right to, and, and you are invited to attend other senior centers because it's the custom of Massachusetts senior centers to, 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 to welcome people from all communities. So we're, we're within the tradition of what other senior centers in our region are doing. Um, and we are going to, um, I hope, I, I, I think this will work. Sarah, I think, um, recommended that we have more than one reception on the desk um, the morning of the first day of the new program cycle so that we have a little bit of a cushion of extra support for that influx of interest and you know multiple phone calls lots of people um, waiting to sign up for things and I think that that was a great idea and I'll be looking forward to having that happen um, and we'll continue to try to refine how we do this to just make that process easier because it's a very demanding job to be at that re reception desk there's a lot going on there are a lot of variety of things can just come up, um, things that, you know, it's not unusual for some, some weird thing to come up that you've never dealt with before. So um, we just, just want that to feel more comfortable <laughs> and supported. Okay. All right. What, was the line dancing group going to do a performance? I don't know. January, Let's see, I'm not January. in Jan I don't, I, so the only thing I have and the only thing I've looked at are the calendars. And yes, there is. Yep. On January 26th, at, which is a Thursday at 2 o'clock, the line dancers will do a performance. That'll be nice. Yeah. And the Happy Bones and Balance class is going to have a cookie swap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next week, right? Next week. <laughs> yeah, that's a, such a fun idea. I'm glad you're doing that. I'm going to take a look now at the statistics that I prepared for you, and I will just um, <clears throat> up here. Oops, that's not. Oh, the daily average has gone up. So you might remember that the daily average of unduplicated individuals who have come through the building has been in the 70s for the past few months, and it even dipped down into the 60s over the summer, but now it's quite robust at 86. Um, it might be an interesting goal to, to, have that, to have that number be hovering around 100. You know, 100 different individuals utilizing the senior center every day would feel, I think, pretty good and would not, you know, the getting from 86 to 100 wouldn't change the comfort of being here, I don't feel. Um, so, so, you'll, so these numbers are straight out of our database, and I know it's sort of hard to make sense of them sometimes. Um, you know what a card swipe is. It's whenever you or someone, you know, or anyone else swipes their card to indicate that they've arrived and are utilizing the senior center in some way. Um, so 932 of those in a month is, is quite large. Um, and the classes, workshops, and events, that number, 920, refers to attendees of those classes. But those are duplicates because, you know, as you know, it's not you are some, some of these people are you, people attend more than one thing in a month. And so therefore, um, that 920 includes, say, multiple swipes from the same person. You know, one person could do 20 things in a month. Not, not very difficult if you're a regular user of the center. Um, so that's a huge number, but it doesn't reflect individual people. Um, it's the instances in which people have done things, um, often repeat people. 
Uh, the, the reception desk continues to track phone calls and the number of people walking in, so that's, you know, always interested to see that. that that's not database, that's like literally taking a little a note, noting every instance of a phone call or someone walking in the building that they observe. Uh, I think lunches and food, food recipients is all pretty straightforward, and um, again, you have this and you can refer back to it. Um, the things that tend to change that are kind of, I think, worth looking at and noting are, um, well, so I, I'm making an effort here, so I'm going to highlight this and turn it yellow. I'm making an effort to note any kind of unusual activities that will happen in a month, like election day took place in November, the behavioral health and anti-stigma forum that I already talked about. Artists' receptions happen every other month, and they, those are special events, and again, I really encourage you to come to any of them that we have because you don't have to stay long, and it's very supportive, and they're fun, and there's food, and you get to see art and chat. Um, it's good. To, the, the, com the committee and department meetings have been steady for a few months now. Those things have been um, stable and good, and it's a real pleasure to be able to have this building in use by you know a, a good number of departments and committees. And um, and the non the non municipal groups that are not necessarily heavily affiliated um, are in here. I'll just highlight this now. Um, Non-municipal groups, the Friends of the Hadley Council on Aging, the Fiddle Orchestra of Western Massachusetts, Age and Dementia Friendly Hadley Working Group. Um, and then next month, of course, I would, I would be able to report that um, the Council of Social, what's that? <laughs> the, the group of people who are basically social workers in Hampshire County, that, that will be a good thing to be able to report happened. Um, and the AARP trainings that are happening here right now. So you see every month there's some kind of um, the, the building is used by like a relevant group of people doing work that I, I try to assess it as being um, relevant and helpful to people in this community. There's a large group of COSA in there now. Right. With the legislators. Right, and the legislators are there. That room is filled. Yep. Yeah, that, so that's been in the work for a few mm -hmm. months, and I was really pleased to be able to, to let them use that space. It always is a little tricky to have an outside group use the space during working hours, and sometimes it just isn't possible. Um, and I evaluate those on a case-by-case -case basis, to be honest, that's how that's happening. Um, in general, I'm not, I would not have a group like that come here without staff being here. So the, the tension is, okay, great, we're open, there's staff here, so there's some supervision of the space that is on site. Um, but it takes up the space that is in use for other things. Well, but it's not it's not a terrible imposition for the lunch program to to you know to accommodate something going on in the dining room. But it but nonetheless it does you know it's it's easier when people aren't there. That's definitely true. Um, I took a look at the most recent COVID data, which I will continue to do while COVID is with us, which is probably forever. Um, and it looks like the 14-day average per, per 100,000 people in Hadley, um, and that 100, that, you know, although Hadley doesn't have 100,000 people as residents, the, the mathematical equation to come at that number um, just m multiplies the, um, the daily average by that figure so that it's um, comparable to other communities. So, but only 9.4 people per 100,000 in the 14-day in the period ending on December 8th is that's the lowest number I've seen in a while although we do but we know that other illnesses are on the rise like the flu and the um, you know upper respiratory virus that is going around and so um, I still you know we're not we're mask optional we're not wearing masks but I do feel very supportive of anyone who chooses to do that um, and it, it's, it I can't deny that it makes sense you know the people who are wearing masks are making are making a smart, healthy decision. I'm just curious. <laughs> I was trying to play with that number, 9.4 per 100,000 uh, in Hadley. So if you boil that down to the number of residents of Hadley, it's, don't you come out with less than 
half right. of a person. <laughs> right. I, it's just a mathematical equation, so it's yeah. it's an abstract concept. So I mean, you'd have to. I'm, I'm just wondering. Do, what, yeah. Does that mean there weren't any? Well, or obviously there a was couple, some, some small right. fraction, but. But the, so that that's why I, I I go to a different source of data to 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 give you the number. The new reported cases um, that is in a different within a different date range that's um, reported by um, the Western Massachusetts um, Public Health Institute. So I go there to give you a more relatable number that is just based on new reported cases in Hadley, you know, between November 20th and December 3rd. Um, well, one of the interesting things that should be happening soon is um, the town has signed up with a state agency to test the water samples for urine. Mm. But you can't say those are all Hadley people because we have many people on the corridor passing through staying in hotels that all go into our sewer system to be tested. Mm. Right. But it gives you a sense of if you're out, who you're going to meet or what the chances right. are. Mm. That's in really interesting. Mm. Well, so once, that, once that number gets up, the Board of Health will be posting it. Great. And speaking of the Board of Health, I know that they have hired a part-time nurse who is, um, I think, planning to reach out to me because um, she will have office hours in our nurse's office once a week, and it will go back to the way it was when um, Marjorie Bernard was the nurse, and she had regular office hours once a week for four hours. I don't know how many hours this nurse will be devoting to that. Maybe it'll be the same. Maybe it'll be four hours a week. I'll take it. Um, and it was so helpful for people to just know that she was there and, um, you know, so such, so someone will be regularly checking the phone, being able to make appointments, they can do B12 injections and um, other kinds of health information, vitals checks, blood pressure. Um, so I don't, I don't know when she's starting, um, but I do expect her to reach out to me um, to introduce herself so that we can meet and talk about um, when she will be here. So I hope I have a new development to report next month on that. I just have a quick question. The walk-ins, those mm. don't include the scan people? There are people like at that meeting? In I there? think they do include the okay. scan people. I think it's both. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And right, and that's why that number is really big. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Unforeseen business. Um, Jane, I just want to invite you to, to, to share anything that is relevant, including building updates. I did announce that the RFP for the solar array had been withdrawn um, because it needed to be reworked um, and would be put up again when that had been done. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add sort of in that category or general news that you want to share as a select board member? So the, the solar bid, the reason it was rejected or taken back was I had failed to include the details from the standing seam roof manufacturer of how panels had to be attached to not void the roof warranty. Gotcha. So that's critical information and absolutely it needed to be included. Gotcha. I only included information about the roof. I, I see. I okay. Wasn't thinking. And luckily, Gary picked it up. So good. good it's job. all good. It's going forward. Yeah, and I, I remain grateful for the work you've done to get it this far because it's been it's just, a lot of effort. It's just hard right at this time of year because all the new licenses for 2023 are going out, and the town office is inevitably understaffed and overworked and trying to get another bid out correctly. We'll probably not see it go out until next week or the following. Okay, thank you. But it, it is, it's there and it's going. And on the first bid, there were 14 people who were interested. Great, and how quickly, oh, wow. and Dave had asked about sort of the length of time between the bid going out and then selecting, um, well, the RFP going out and then selecting a, a bid, but was it really quick to get that 14 interested people? Oh, when it went out, the, yeah. Right off. Right off. Right. Okay. So well, I would assume I had made up a list. I just went through the Google list of who did solar in Western Mass. So really? Jennifer, all these people should be contacted and told this is out, as well as people who would be looking for it on the town website. So, excellent. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I have no doubt that it'll, you know, it, the corrected version will be posted and you'll continue to have a robust interest, so that's great. Is there a closing date for yes. responses? Yes, end of January. Will that change? No, that's, that will be the new date. Okay, the new closing date. Approximately the end I of see. January. Okay. Um, anything else you want to talk about? Any board initiatives or friends um, initiatives that you'd like us to know about? The friends are, okay, so friends, last, we do our calendar year ending in October for some reason. Okay. No, that's when we have our annual meeting. Our calendar year actually ends in December. But we did the calculation of friends' support of the Council on Aging for the 12 months it ended in October, and it was 18000 some odd dollars. Oh, great. Then I'll, I will use that data um, when I I'm submitting my details. budget request. Yeah, because it's important for the town to understand the level to which we are supported by an outside organization. I mean, they make it possible. They, I feel like they provide, the friends provide a lot of really excellent quality of life improvements that we wouldn't have. And great meals. Yes, and great meals. Yeah, yeah and just I, I'd like to just acknowledge that our holiday meal on December second was so oh, nicely was attended. Fabulous. Excellent food. <laughs> it was wonderful to have um, the police and oh, fire goodness. fighters serving the food. That's yes. always a, a, a thrill. <laughs> um, I love seeing Mike Mason use the dishwasher. <laughs> I have pictures of that. I have okay. pictures of the of the uh, of our local police working in the kitchen and Did serving. Did you give some to Violet to put in the newsletter? Yes, Excellent. I knew that. I bought, I was going to send them to Mike Mason or some or um, someone in the department I didn't know where send them to Laura Trombley okay because she keeps their their uh, yes they, I yeah. think she their manages their Facebook, social media their Facebook yeah, page Lauren Trombley I can, we can give you I'll get info. I'll get the uh, yeah. email later uh -huh. yeah because they're great pictures they show Mike Mason leaning over the dishwasher <laughs> or the uh, kitchen sink and another guy sitting on the right handling dishes and then Lieutenant Cook who's what, six foot eight or yeah. something, <laughs> leaning down over a table to pour, <laughs> yeah. to pour yeah. cider. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, it was great. And they enjoy that very much. They yeah. really like getting out of, the, out of the work mode and getting in with people that are friendly and happy instead mm -hmm. of always yeah. in crises. Yeah, I, I feel it's a good two-way street scenario mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's fun to have them. And I thought, and, and just really want to acknowledge Susan Glowatsky who cooked the meal mm -hmm. and you know she's the lead cook on all the lunchbox meals and you know we do have some good great volunteers who help but she does the lion's share and, and she is so generous um, mm -hmm. I, I'm really proud of our police yeah I was I'm really fine. proud of them yeah so I want to say something because I've had questions not from here but other people just to clear it up the question is all of the Hadley Police Patrol on the Route 9 construction, and what does that do to our staff mm. safety complex? And in fact, the regular policemen that we knew before Route 9 construction are not doing that. Yeah. They are special hires through the Hadley Police <laughs> Department ah, who have yeah. been sheriffs or other capable positions to actually do traffic detail. So it is not diluting the force at all in Hadley. That's good information. Right. Was a they explained to us that one of the coffee with the cops they explained to us that on the back of their jackets it might say traffic or something. It might say fire. It might say police. But you know there are different right. designations for the and, people working. And there. one of the interesting things that I learned last year in the select board is we keep police cruisers when they are past their useful life as a cruiser to use specifically on things like traffic control because the blue lights still flash. And oh, yeah, that oh that's sense. really interesting. So the cars can't chase anybody, they, but they, they still they're flash. not as good for chasing. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So. That's, that's something else. And Coffee with a Cop is happening this, this Thursday, Thursday at 2. At 2. So if you'd like to see, you know, if you'd like to have a visit with our police force, come to that. I mean, that's popular. People do. People tend to have that on their radar, which is nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a very popular program. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think that I have any, un, let, me, let me just, I had kind of a, a list of things to mention. Okay, I need to, I need to talk at you for another minute or two. Um, uh, 
Okay, we, I just got notified by Paul Burns Johnson with the PVTA, Pioneer Valley Transit Authority, that we ha will be receiving um, our full requested grant for the next fiscal year, which is excellent. So that's a 50% match for the cost of having a van program. It's great. It also will cover um, Mark Lewatsky's time if he even uses the car to do a medical ride, which he will do sometimes. And so I, I like having the ability to pay him for more than his normal hours to do, you know, occasional medical drives and having him be available and willing to do that and use the car and having the car. All of those are, are big benefits. So um, in general, I feel like our transportation program is working. And um, it's not perfect, but I haven't been able to figure out a model that would be closer to perfect. And it's pretty darn good. I feel like we almost never have to say no to someone with a special request. Um, what I'd like to see is the van use in, uh, grow. Um, so I feel like we might have a, we have a, um, a communications task you know, with, a, with an interesting challenge. Can we grow the ridership on the van? What would we have to do to get the word out in an effective way? Um, and maybe there isn't demand, like maybe we discover that, but I think we could try harder and do some different things strategically with communicating. Um, and I'm addressing that to Linda because she is one of the senior tax work off um, people who will be working at the senior center. Um, that process has just come to a close. We had more applicants than ever before, both for the senior tax work off program and the veterans tax work off program. These programs exist for income eligible people to get a break on their property tax of $1,000. Um, Linda is a long time user of this program um, and she will be a communications assistant in the, in the starting in January. Um, yay! yay! <laughs> Diane Tolpa, who I think you all know, um, a, a wonderful, excellent volunteer here, will uh, again do lunch delivery under this program, which is really nice to be able to pay her back something for that effort. Um, Joanne Gregoire, who is a, a, a br briefly one of our board members, will be working at the library and that will be her second year doing that. And there were two, we had our first ever veterans um, applicants and Alan Weinberg, Rose's husband, will be working at the library. Um, and a younger woman, Angela Breeze, who I haven't met in person, um, is going to be um, an assistant to, um, for the uh, Conservation Commission and attending meetings and writing minutes and um, doing some of that important work. And she is, um, I think, a communications specialist for um, a state agency that's involved with the environment. So this will be, it'll be really a good fit for her. So it was, I was really happy that we had the most applicants ever. We issued a, a press release earlier than in the past, which I think was helpful. And um, I got a lot of excellent job descriptions from department heads, um, including Alex. And I'm sorry that one of those people isn't going to be working for you, but it sounds like you've got this under control with interns and um, a part-time helper. Um, so that's good information. And I will also mention that um, Catherine Abe is having a surgery um, in um, February, so she will be uh, out for a few weeks. Um, and we are developing revised liability forms for um, exercise and fitness classes that I've run by um, the town council and um, also for the, uh, the waiver forms that are signed by people who borrow durable medical equipment. Since we have these, because we want to think a little bit about refining how we handle those forms, I thought it was a good idea to just even see if these forms had teeth legally. Um, and if they needed to be edited and changed in order to be sort of pass muster and offer some protections. So I got um, some editorial feedback from um, the lawyers for the town and I'll be revising those slightly. It, that's really low impact on you, but I just want you to know it's happening because it affects the community. These documents go out to many, many people and I'm glad to know that they'll be now um, compliant legally. So that's it. Can I go back to the friends? Yeah, please. One of the things we do, I mean, we do big things like the fundraisers, the wine tasting, the holiday meal, but we do little things like the wipe off mat at the front door. Yeah. It's changed every two weeks and it keeps from tracking in all the salt in the winter. Things like the um, planters for the plants out front. Yes. They're in here in the hopes the plants survive the winter, but if not, we'll put new ones in them. But it's, it's a, you know, little things that you don't even think about. 
that keep showing up everywhere. Yeah, I think that's a great, thank you for pointing that out. I'll also mention that our um, newspaper subscription is paid for by the Friends, and that's a nice resource we have here, as well as the My Senior Center database, which costs um, I don't know, $1,200 a year to, to keep it, and it gives me the ability to annoy you all with robocalls, which is very valuable to me, and it's a really important tool. Um, and we print the newsletter. And you print the newsletter, and um, yeah, well actually I think postage is now paid by, or You're by us. You're postage, paid, but we do the yeah. printing. The printing yeah. is, yeah, no, it's, it's expensive. So. And there are, there, are, there are senior centers that do not print a newsletter now, but we do, I continue to feel like it's even though I know it's an underutilized resource and that's a little painful, nonetheless, it is the best way to get a list of everything that's happening here into the hands of seniors. And we, and Jane does an amazing job with keeping our, our mailing list of people 60 and over in this town accurate and up to date, which is a big job that will gradually be um, moved over to Catherine as she learns how to do it because it's a process. Um, but I feel like that's all. For me. No, one more. Oh, one. There's more. The, the bottom line is in the January newsletter, we're putting out our request for support with an envelope yes. so people can mm -hmm. send us money to continue to do the things we do. Yes, okay. important to support the And friends. it would be nice if you all, as board members, could say to various people you meet, have you supported the friends? They're important to us. Because the more word of mouth that we get, the better off we are. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it is important and we want to support it. So you can buy us more goodies. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We do all enjoy the benefits of their support. Oh, yeah. Always. If we looked around and started counting them, we'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea to prepare a flyer. A did you know that the friends support A, B, and C, you know, that, you know, kind of a punchy little list mm -hmm. of the... Sue Maybe. and I are um, tomorrow going over our entries into the budget for the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. And we keep a Excel sheet of debit cards and uh, checks that we have written. And I think we're up to 400 or something. So there's lots of stuff going on. Well, we'll items, be. things that you pay for, things yeah. that you buy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, art supplies, cleaning supplies, just right. a lot. Kleenex. 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 Yeah. Can't, can't live without it. Yeah, I think the town should know this. Yeah. <laughs> they should and they will. I, I will. Um, the phone yeah. for the van. Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, plenty, plenty of important things that really support us. Um, yeah, if you want to share that, I can have that as be, be part of my um, presentation on my budget. Okay. When is your budget date? Oh, I don't know when I'm pre okay, pre I might draft it. deadline is the 16th, and okay. that's, yeah. Okay. okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I so move. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.